Hello and welcome to the next part of this tutorial series. Today we are actually going to implement all the buttons and randomly spawn one of the created objects. If I hit the play button, an object is going to spawn at the top and I can move to the left, to the right and then rotate it. So let's stop talking and start coding. Let's go to the game.dart and add a button so that we can rotate to the left and to the right just as we prepared last tutorial with the rotate left and rotate right functions. So just go down here where we have the action buttons and let's copy one and paste it down here. And now let's go to the top and edit our enum. So last button pressed enum. We want to have a enum for the rotate left and then rotate right. Now down here we have two arrows and instead of the rotate, let's make a rotate left button and then a rotate right button. And now down here we have two arrows and instead of the rotate, let's make one the rotate left button and then let's make the other one the rotate right button. And instead of the icon being this one, let's type in icons.rotate and look at what we got. So we have a rotate left and that looks quite good. And for the rotate one, we are going to just select the rotate right icon like this one, just the opposite. If I reload the application, go to the play screen, I will get an error because we do not have enough space right here to add the third button. To fix that, we have to go to the action button.dart and for the padding, we can just downsize it to something like five and try it again. Now we should have enough space, so if I hit the play button, I have one, two, three, four buttons right here. And if I hit the left button, we are going to change the last press state to left, right, and rotate left and rotate right. Awesome, it works. And we just set up a new button like that in a couple of minutes. Now we have our UI working, but we still have no way to generate a new Tetris piece and let it fall down. To do that, let's create a new file and call this the helper.dart open it up and this is just going to be a class which returns us a given random block and to do that we want to import the material.dart and also the blocks backslash and now we want to import every single one of them so just do that and make sure you do not forget any of these blocks and now we can make a function which returns a box so just a block and we can just call it the get random block and in here we're just going to get a random number so int random number is going to be equal to the random and to be able to use random we have to import math so import and dart dot math and now we can use the random function and we want to get the next integer and the maximum is going to be seven since we have exactly seven pieces and now we want to create a switch on the random number so case zero is going to return the i block to be able to return we have to pass in a width which we do not know yet Let's hop over to game.dart and let's create a new variable, a global variable. Let's make this a constant int and call this the board width. And let's set it equal to something like 10 and then also make a constant int board height. And let's set it equal to something like 20. So these are the normal dimensions of a Tetris game. So 10 by 20 is the game size. So basically this would be 10 pieces by 20 pieces. While we edit, we can also create a constant double, which we are going to use a little bit later. And let's call this the point size and let's set it equal to 20. This is just going to be the size of one given point in the given Tetris field or Tetris block. So this is just the size in pixels. Okay. Now we can go back to the helper.dart and we have to import the game.dart to be able to use these global variables like this. And in here we can pass in the board width. Awesome, let's now copy the case zero with the return and, and paste it down exactly seven times. Once you paste it down from zero to six for the cases, you can then change the blocks that we are going to return. So let's return a J block, and after that a L block, and after that a S block, then a square block, a T block, and a Z block, like this. Now we have covered all of these since these now are highlighted. So once we're done with that, we have a way of generating a random block. Now we have a way of getting a random new block, but we have no way of actually drawing the, these blocks out. So let's make a function which returns a widget, and let's call this the get Tetris point. And we are going to pass in a color, and this is just going to be the color. This is why we imported the material.dart. And in here, we just want to return a container in which the width is going to be equal to the point size and the height is also going to be equal to the point size and the decoration that's quite important is going to be equal to a new box decoration and the color of the decoration is going to be the color and the shape of the decoration is going to be the box shape dot rectangle this is just going to return us a widget which is going to have a rectangle drawn out because we have the box decoration with the sizes of 
width times height, which is the point size by point size, which is 20 by 20 pixels. Also, now we have a function for generating a point and also a function for getting a random new block. So let's close up the helper.dart file. And in the game.dart, we have to import the helper.dart. Let's now start coding up some kind of timer, which is just going to call a given function every single X amount of seconds or milliseconds in our case. So let's make a constant int and call this the game speed which is just the update frame rate. So 400 milliseconds per frame is going to be good, which is going to give us about two updates per second. And to be able to update Flutter over time, we have to create a timer and let's call this the timer. And to be able to use the timer, we have to import a new file, which is called the dart.async. While we're adding some kind of variables, let's now add a new variable. Let's call make a block and let's call this the current block. And the block is unknown, so we can just import the block. So import blocks spec slash block dot dart like this. And now we should be able to use the block component. Let's now start building our game. So down here under the on action button press, let's create a new function. Let's call this the void start game, which is just going to start our timer. And in the set state function, because we again want to change some kind of state, we have to assign the current block variable to something at the start. So just the current block is going to be equal to the get random block like this. So we can get a random new block. And after that, we want to set up the timer. So the timer that we created earlier, the global timer is going to be equal to a new timer dot periodic because we want to update it periodically. And the duration is just going to be a new duration. And in here we want the time in milliseconds and we have the game speed in here. Awesome. And for the callback function, we have to still create that. So let's right away create a callback function and call this the void on time tick. And the callback function for a timer will take in a timer dot time. Now let's copy the on time tick name and go over here and paste it in here. And after that hit a semicolon. Now we have a timer, which is going to tick every 400 milliseconds and call this function the on time tick. And what do we want to do every time tick? If you have ever played Tetris, we're just going to basically move down the object by one. So in here, we want to check if the current block is not equal to null, just a say precaution. If it's equal to null, we just want to return out of this function and not do anything. And if it's not equal to null, we want to set a new state because we want to change the current block variable and by just moving it down. So call the move function. And now we want a move direction dot down. Awesome. This is going to be our base layout for the on time tick. But now we are still not drawing anything. It's just a empty function, which is just working on with some kind of variables in the back end. We are not seeing anything. To actually change it, we have to create another function, which is going to return us a widget with all the Tetris blocks. So let's make a widget function in the game class and call this the draw Tetris box. And, and again, check if the current Tetris block is equal to null, then we want to return out of this function. And if it is not equal to null, we are going to create a list of positioned objects. And let's call this the visible points. And this is going to be equal to a new list like this. And now we want to loop through each individual point of the current selected block. So current block dot points. And then we can call the for each function on them. And for each point, we want to do something and do not forget to add a semicolon at the end of the for each. And for every single point, we want to get a new position object, which is basically just some kind of widget with a position. Quite simple. Let's create a new positioned object, which is going to be equal to a position like this with some kind of parentheses. And for the child, we're just going to get a widget, a point, from the get Tetris point function, which we created earlier. And we want the color to be the current block dot color. And for the left position, we want this to be to equal to the point dot X that we have selected times the point size. This is very important. And then there's also a parameter called top, which is going, just going to be equal to the point dot Y times the point size. Be sure to have the same points as I do. And now that we created a new position point, we are not really using it. So let's add the new position point to the visible point list by just going visible point list dot add and then the new point. And once we're done with all of these things, we want to actually create one widget out of all this list. And we can quite simply do that by just going in return stack and for the children. We want to pass in the list with the visible points, visible points like this and hit a semicolon like that. And also we have a function which will draw all the visible current block points. So let's copy the function name right now. 
and go down here in the build function because now we have a function and we still need to call it to actually use it. And we can simply use it by adding a child to the already existing container that we have. Be sure to put it right here where I do. So the in the container right after the box decoration comment right here. So the child is going to be the draw Tetris blocks like that and we should be good to go because this is just going to pass in a widget with all the available points to us. And now if I hit the play button, nothing will happen because we are never actually calling the start game function and the current block does not get assigned and the on time tick never gets started. And we can simply change that, but we have to be careful with the way we are going to change it because the start game function is supposed to get called only once every single game or every single time we press the play button. If we would call it in the build function, it would get called every single time and we do not want to do that. We just want to call it the first time we are actually building this game. And we can do that by simply making some kind of function that is that acts like a awake or start function in Unity. So let's make create a override tag and let's override the void and init state function. And in the init state function, we have to call the super dot init state. If we don't do that, we will get an error. And now we can actually call any function we want. So let's call, just call the start game function and hit a semicolon. And now we are almost done with starting the game. Before we start the game, we still have to fix one little bug I had from the last tutorial in the block dart file uh, where we actually have the move function the void move and pass in the move direction in the case of the move direction down we obviously do not want to add to the point.x we want to add to the point.y once we change that we still have one little thing to do where we have the start game function and create the timer we do not want to update it every 400 microseconds because it's just a little bit too fast and i hope you have not started the app yet we want to add increment in, in milliseconds. And now if I hit shift R and hit the play button, I should be able to see a object right here and the object will just go down, fall down. The buttons do not work right now. They don't do anything and it just will continue to fall. And to set it up, we already tricked the perform action variable right here. So we know which state we are in. And now in the time tick, we want to check if the perform action variable is not equal to the last button pressed none. So if we have pressed a button in the last update, so if the perform action is not equal to the last button pressed dot none, then we want to actually change the state of something. So let's call the set state function and put a semicolon after that and also a parenthesis like this, awesome. And in here, we want to just have a couple of if else statements or a switch, it does not really matter. So let's make a switch. And we want to switch on the perform action. So if the perform action is equal to the last button pressed dot left, then we want the current block dot move and we want to pass in the direction. So move direction dot left since we already have a function for that. And then we want to break out of this and let's copy this one now for one, two and three times. And now if you press the right button, then we want to move to the right. Now it's going to be interesting if we press the rotate left button, then we want to rotate left. So it's not going to be the move function that we want to call, but we want to call the rotate left function. And the other way around, if we rotate right, then we want to call the rotate right function. And it's the default in the switch, just put in a break. We don't really need to use it and we don't have to worry about it, but it will not compile otherwise. And at the end of the set state right here, after the switch, we actually have to reset the button because if we would not reset it, every single update we would, for example, rotate right even if we have not pressed it this single frame right there. So in here, we just want the perform action to be set to the last button pressed, none, so that we reset the button that has been pressed. Awesome. Now if I shift restart and hit the play button, now we can move with the block around to the left and to the right and we can also rotate it and we can also rotate it this way. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed this part of the tutorial series. It was a little bit more on the graphics side again. So we got to actually implement the back end that we had into the UI. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment down below if you like it or do not like this series and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.